whether you want to plan on the daily or just daily plan on those really busy days that you want to be productive, this video is for you. So I filmed this on my computer and every time I start there is a countdown and there's a tone to it. It goes And it reminds me of Mario Kart every single time. And it just makes my heart so happy. Um, I was always Peach. So it just, oh, it brings back. Those were the days. What character were you, child, children of the 90s? Can you, if you're a child of the 90s, can you say that if you're born before the 90s? Like when I think a child of the 90s, that's like the main growing up time, right? What, I don't know. Okay, let me know, let me know. So I just listened to Jenna Kutcher's podcast episode talking about how you should assume that no one knows about your business or your niche, niche, niche. So that's how I'm approaching today's episode. Get ready for the next episode. Hey, yay, yay, yay. Drink coffee every day. I think that's how that song goes. Hello and hi, I'm Heather. I am the one woman show currently behind Sprout a Planner. Beautiful and functional planners and accessories for you to live an intentional, reflective, and simple life, no matter the season you are in. I always say it will work in any season of life you're in because I created it in the hardest season of my life. Currently, I make two types of planners, weekly and daily. There is also a monthly planner, but that is a little bit different. Also, for 2024, I am planning on making a new planner. It's going to be the love child of the daily and the weekly planner. So, you heard it here first. In full disclosure, I am a weekly planner through and through. I always have been TBD if I always will be. If that is also you, you can still watch this video. But just a heads up that I made a different video of how to plan your week. I will link it here or put a thing here if I can figure it out. If not, I'm pointing at nothing and I feel like an idiot right now. However, at least once a week, I add in some daily planning, either in Sprout a Planner or on, on one of the notepads or sticky notes. Here's the process I do when I daily plan. It's also similar to what experts say to do according to my research. So let's get to it. Number one, start your planning by reflecting on the day before. Close out that day so you can begin a new day totally fresh. Jot down a sentence or two about what went well or what you struggled with or just anything you want to keep in memory. Number two, set your intention for the day. Intention is simply determination or your attitudes towards your actions for the day. So there is a long rectangular box in your daily planner just below the date. I designed this space for you to put your intention, but it is unlabeled so you can use it however you want. Try on a couple of these prompts for a size when you are setting your intention for the day. By the end of the day, today I want to feel, today it's important for me at the end of the day, what do I want to feel proud about? The most powerful thing you can do is tie your intention back to your values. If you have a Sprout Planner, this is in the beginning of your planner in those setup pages. Step three, write your three. Well, that lined up nicely, didn't it? Just below your intention box is a space with three check boxes. It's a great place for you to write in your top three for the day which is three things that are important for you to get done that day. Again, unlabeled, so you could also use this space for habits, gratitude, meal planning, or do a combination. So you could do one top thing you wanna get done that day or is important to get done that day. A second thing could be one gratitude for the day, and then the third check could be your meal for the day. So you get to use it however you want to. Step four, fill in your schedule. Your monthly spread will tell you what's up. Give it a flipperoo and see what you have going on that day, then fill it in. The beautiful thing about having an hourly schedule is that it shows you a realistic picture of your day. All that white space in your day, that's a good thing. You can fill those in once you complete your to-dos, which will be next and we'll talk about more then, or leave them open for some flexibility and cushion. Step a five, write your to-dos. So there's a mini process you can go through at this step. 
Move over anything from the previous day that's still relevant and you still need to do. Add anything from top of mind. Kind of get that brain dump on the page. Write your needle movers. Those are your important things. Maybe they're goals, maybe they're a project you're working on. Something that will just move the needle, whether big or small for that day, that you're just moving it forward. Check your email and text. See if you need to reply to anyone, get back to anything. Reference your people, reminders, and your list. Again, if you have the Sprout of Planner, which I hope you do, uh, in the beginning pages, when you set up, you set up your people, your reminders, your year list. So check that, see if there's anything that you want to accomplish that day in regards to that. Step six, prioritize and designate time for your to-dos. This is kind of optional and there's various ways of doing it. Some people do not want to designate their to-dos. They just want to work off their list and go down it. And that's fine. But if this is important for you, or you want to be really productive that day, then this is your step. First things first, prioritize. If you haven't used your three check boxes that we talked about previous for your top three of the day, or the one to three of the day, then identify the one to three tasks on your to-do list that are most important for you to get done that day. Second, choose your productivity style. I'm gonna go through these fairly fast, but there's a ton of research out there. So I'm gonna list the names of these productivity hacks or tips or things. Wow. Methods, that's it, methods. I'm gonna list those in the video notes so that you can reference it and then search it. One, time blocking. The time blocking method has you scheduling tasks from your to-do list right into your schedule. Using this method, you can gain a realistic understanding of what you can actually get done in the day. You, of course, should be scheduling in your priority tasks first. You are also naturally prioritizing when you're time blocking because you will inevitably run out of time of the day. So if you're getting to the end of the day and you haven't fit in everything on your to-do list, then you're gonna naturally figure out what's important for you to get done in that day and what just has to go or be moved. One thing to note here, so we tend to underestimate how long a task takes. So when you are scheduling something in your, in your schedule using this method, then be sure to add more time than you think. I've actually read the opposite as well, but in my experience, the former is always true. It always takes way longer than I anticipate. And if it doesn't, it's a happy surprise. If you wanna take this even further, then I recommend time tracking, either on paper or digitally, and start tracking how long tasks take you. So while we don't do the same exact thing every single day, every single week, we do similar tasks uh, daily, weekly, monthly, when you're time tracking how long those take, then you'll eventually get a approximate understanding of how long those will take. If you find a general or average amount of time it takes for those type of tasks, then you can use the time blocking system more accurately. Another productivity method is the Pomodoro method. I hope I'm saying that right. This is for people who enjoy working in short bursts of time and have lots of breaks built in. And with the timer. Essentially, you set your timer for 25 minutes on and five minute break. So during that 25 minutes, you are working on one task, just laser focused, going to town working on that task. Timer's up, you take a five minute break. After five minutes is up, you get back to it and it goes around for another 25 minutes. You do this in four cycles, then you take a longer break. You take about a 20 to 30 minute break. And then once that's done, you just start it all over again. Another productivity method, called Eat That Frog. So you can search the internet for the background of this, but essentially this method has you doing the one most dreaded task of your day with the idea that everything will be easier after that. Not only do you save procrastination time, you also save a ton of mental energy that you would have been doing dreading that task. That daily win that happens right away will also give you a spike in energy to keep you going on that task list. Another method, batching whether days or tasks or both. Most productive people swear by this method. Batching is designating time to tasks that are related to each other. So it saves your brain from having to go back and forth between different types of tasks, which is a productivity and concentration killer. You can designate batch days. So for example, Mondays might be your cleaning day, Tuesdays your content creation, Wednesdays for writing, etc. Or, and, and or, 
both, both and you batch tasks. So you spend a designated amount of time returning phone calls, for example. And that's what you do for the hour. You just have all these phone calls you need to return and you just do it in that batch because you are in the phone call mode. The last one I have is the Eisenhower matrix. This four quadrant matrix has you sorting your to-do list into the appropriate quadrant, which already has marching orders attached to it. So picture a uh, Y and X axis. The Y axis has two scales, important and not important. The X axis has two scales too, urgent and not urgent. This makes up the four quadrants, important and urgent, important and not urgent, not important and urgent, and not important and not urgent. Sort your daily tasks into the four quadrants, then follow the marching orders. Important and urgent, do it. Important and not urgent, schedule it. Not important and urgent, delegate it. Not important and not urgent, delete it. This is a great method for those that struggle with too many tasks or trying to figure out how to fit tasks in that are outside your routine. Maybe a bunch of the tasks that you have in your natural routine are going to fall into the not important and not urgent bucket and you can delete it. Then you've just freed up your time. I'm sure there are many more productivity methods out there. These are just the biggies. Okay, before we get to the last step, I want to know what productivity method appeals to you the most. Or maybe you already use one of these, and I want to hear about your experience with that too. So if you could write that in the comments below, that would be great, and I would appreciate it. Thank you! Okay, step seven, decorate. Obviously, this is totally optional. If you have the bandwidth and you feel like it, then go for it. You do you, boo. I'm pretty sure we don't say that anymore, but I just did. If you have the time and desire, whip out those washi tape, highlighters, stickers, and add some flair. Lastly, and not part of the steps, I wanna to touch on the other spaces in your daily Sprouted Planner. First up, the grid. This is a perfect spot for any lists you need to make. Groceries, stores that you need to go to while you're running errands, brain dumps, whatever. You could also use this spot as an extension of your to-do list. You could either just keep on writing straight across, or you could do something like uh, in your to-do list, return emails or return text messages. And then in your grid spot, you can list out the people whose texts you need to return. You could also use it as a tracker. Habits, water intake, money spent, etc. Next, the blank space. This is just a free space for notes. Throughout the day, we have all those random notes. You get a phone call, you need to jot down a number or some information. You look up a place and you want to jot down the hours of operation, brainstorming podcast notes, anything. Lastly, the grayed out rectangle on the bottom. So I designed this spot to be your place for reflection for the day, for you to just jot down a sentence or two, just like we started with in the beginning of this planning method. So nothing fancy. Otherwise, if that's not your cup of tea, you can just throw a strip of washi tape over it and call it a day. Or you could put your meal plan down there or your gratitude list. It, you know, you can use it for whatever, it's unlabeled. You don't have to fill every inch of your planner on the daily. Some days you will, some days you won't. Embrace the white space. So to recap how to plan your day in the daily planner. Number one, start with previous day by reflecting on it. Number two, set your intention for the day. Number three, write your three. Number four, fill in your schedule. Number five, number six, prioritize and designate your to-dos. And number seven, decorate. I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to let me know what productivity method is most appealing to you or anything else you wanna talk about down there in that old comment section. Thank you for your time watching this. I really do appreciate you. And I hope the rest of your day is super duper gang. I'm a Mario. My name is a Borat. Digitally, digital, 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 but this is getting worse. Digitally, digitally, di digitally, oh, well, the word has lost all meaning.